Welcome back to the channel and to another new episode of Five Things You Might Not Know. This, as always, is the 101. If you missed any of the previous episodes, check them out in the playlist linked in the description. And with that said, let's get this one underway. Episode 27 of Five Things You Might Not Know About WWE 2K19. First up today, yet another bonus use for this year's carry system. So previously in this series we covered a bunch of lesser known ways you can use the system and today we have got another. Today's one is just a small one but what you still might not know is that the system can be used to put your opponent in two corner positions. Firstly it can be used to put your opponent on the top rope when using the powerbomb position which is simply done by pressing up on the right analog stick when near the corner. Using the same method with the cradle position, you can also put your opponent in the tree of woe. These also work in combination with the top rope dive reversals, which then allows you to put your opponent back where they came from. With thing number two, we're back in the NXT arena with more unique commentary. So previously in this series, we covered how the main roster superstars and even legends who when appear in NXT trigger unique commentary. This time the focus is former NXT superstars who get unique audio when making their return to NXT. Sami Zayn, once upon a time, the very heart and soul of NXT, has returned home. Shinsuke Nakamura, one of the most exciting superstars to ever burst on the scene in WWE. And it started right here in NXT. It started here in NXT where he was well, originally known as the artist, but Shinsuke Nakamura, a change of attitude, a change in personality, and some would say, including myself, he's no longer the artist, he's become a con artist. Well, you can question his motives all you want, but you can't argue with the results, Saxton. Look who's back at NXT! Jinder Mahal, no stranger to the NXT universe. As a matter of fact, Jinder competed in the finals against Seth Rollins, to crown the first ever NXT champion. Breeze back at NXT where it all began. Prince Pretty has returned to offer salvation to all these uggos. Both of you guys had the opportunity to follow Tyler Breeze's career at NXT. Well, you think back to NXT TakeOver Fatal 4-Way where Tyler Breeze was part of the main event, or how about NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, the very first one where Tyler Breeze would take on Japanese legend Jushin Thunder Liger. Breeze may be vain, but has always had a helping hand in bringing NXT hopefuls to the next level. And now he's a part of the fashion police, so he can grade Byron on his silly suits. I don't think they're silly. Moving on with thing number three, a bit of a small thing, but potentially still a handy thing to know, which is how to reset the arena mid-match. So in no disqualification type matches, things can get a little hectic, including a ring full of weapons, barricade breaks, as well as announce table breaks, which with the latter limits you to two announce tables. But what you might not know is that if you want to reset the tables or just reset the arena entirely without actually restarting the match properly, this is actually doable. This is simply done by going backstage then coming back to the arena, which as you see completely resets the ring and ringside area from the previous damage.
Next up with thing number four, we're now talking the Mae Young Classic. Now, as we know, this year's game features with new Mae Young Classic Arena as a new arena, and also features this as a tournament. We also know that unlike the Dusty Classic, which features a special winning scene featuring the trophy itself, the Mae Young Classic doesn't, and doesn't actually feature a trophy at the end, and just reverts to a regular winning scene. But what you might not know is that despite the trophy not being seen at the end of the tournament, the trophy itself still makes an appearance in this year's game. This is featured in the Mae Young Classic Arena at the top of the entrance ramp. This can be seen if you look closely during certain entrances, and is also visible when you go to the stage during the actual match. And last up today, we're thing number five, we have got some hidden tombstones and even tombstones out of nowhere. Now, as we all know, the tombstone pile driver is a badass move, and there is a bunch of versions of this move in this year's game. But what you might not know is that there is even more than what's just listed in the move sets. This includes two tombstones out of nowhere via reversals, which make for some epic finisher into finisher moments which includes the mid-move reversal for Kane's version, in addition to a regular reversal for the Leaping version, which even features the classic take-up pin combination. Our third hidden tombstone actually takes place via a submission, as following a successful tap-out using the tombstone stretch, your superstar will actually dish out a bit of extra damage following the match, by finishing off the Tombstone Pole Driver. This not only looks brutal in a regular match, there might also be a thing to keep in mind in two out of three falls matches as well. And with that one, there we go, another episode done and dusted. So let me know in the comments if any of today's feature 5 things were new for you. And as always, if you enjoyed today's episode, then a like rating would be awesome to see. Stay tuned to the channel for more like this coming very, very soon. And until next time, this has been 101, and I will see you all on the next one.